Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Illusion of Gaia. Since, la well, last time we put all the statues there, now in order to activate the next sequence we must stand on this spot. The obviously not plot important part, and after waiting long enough, the wind blows us over. Go figure how that works. Anyway, here we have... I think this is the first boss in the game, isn't it? Anyway, I don't know what this guy's supposed to be called, but you need to take out his arms here first, or his hands, or whatever they are. And you want to watch out for that. Now, you basically just need to wait, and don't worry about taking hits. This boss does not last long enough to worry. There we go. Now he's going to do this. Now, this is what Guy was telling us when he, or she, said that we should stay behind him. But you can stay right in the corner there, too, and that works just as well. Now, you do want to avoid getting hit by that if possible, but it's not particularly important. Now, come on, open up. Take damage! Take damage! Game. Okay. There we go. Normally, you won't get hit nearly that much, but for some reason, he took forever to, you know, resume taking damage. Basically, as soon as you take out his hands, you can attack the uh, head as well, but for some reason, it just took a long time. The nice thing about this game, once you, just like Zelda games, once you beat the boss, you get a free HP refill, which is quite nice. Now, after this, we just head up here. And it seems odd that we get, you know, the regular dungeon music after beating the boss, but meh. Anyway, in order to continue, we must head down here. Now, I hope you weren't expecting an action-heavy episode today, because it's not going to happen. Unfortunately, after beating the boss, there's pretty much nothing but talking for the next 15 minutes or so. And maybe a little longer if you decide to waste a lot of time, which I'm going to do. The king has returned. No return of the king clip. No, no. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And he's much shorter. Okay, I'm shorter than the king. Why is Will the king? Now, I don't know if they ever mention this, but it almost seems like, like oftentimes they say, especially with protagonists in games and anime and movies and all that stuff, they say a lot of time that main characters look like their parents. You know, they look exactly like them, only younger, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that means that his father was supposed to be the king of the Incan society, though it doesn't really make sense, but I don't know. Otherwise, I have no idea why they would say he looks like the king. Oh, well, I should guess I should to go talk to the queen, then. What do you say? Rest in this bed. After we look around, of course. Visible in front of the cave. Hmm. What freedom you just won. I don't know a lot about Incan history, so I'm not sure if they're referencing like a war the Incan civilization actually had, or if this is just an entirely strange plot point of the game. Ah. By the invaders. Oh, well that's nice. Okay. You've returned safely. Guarding the mystic statue of the wind. Oh, cool. Oh. It's in the jewel box downstairs. Well, I better go pick that up. It's pretty much all I do in this game is pick up, you know, mystic statues. And pop down here. Talk to you. Okay. What, what do you say? Oh, well, that's helpful. You actually don't... Oops. Hmm. You can watch the ship set sail from the crow's nest. It's the only implication of where you're supposed to go next. I don't know why, but... Yeah, we get the mystic statue. And... Oh, no, that's our first one. Oh, jeez, I always thought we had one already. Man, this takes forever. Probably another test run I was thinking of. Oh, well. Anyway, yeah, we get the statues, they go on the side of the area like that, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Anyway, this is the crow's nest, if you know anything about, you know, pirate mythology or pirate concepts or whatever. And we talk to this guy. 
now we're called the Short King. That's just great. Now is when I should have put the uh, too short for a stormtrooper in there, but man, eh, tough shit. I already did it once. Not doing it again. Not unless this happens again, though I don't think it does. Anyway, the ship is coming out of the cave. Even though it looks like we've been in the middle of the ocean for quite a long time now. Like a new beginning, I would think it would be more blinding. Hmm. Which invaders are they referring to? I'm not even sure. Anyway, you drop down there instead of going all the way down. And in order to activate the next sequence... Oh, right. You're supposed to talk to her. Everything's shabby in this game, especially Will. And apparently his bed is shabby too. But yeah, we have to go and take a nap. Oh. Pulled inside a dream. What kind of dream? Hmm. He's a teenage boy. I don't want anybody to answer what kind of a dream he had. And apparently I am home. Can I leave? No. Can't leave. Anyway, this is... Will's mother. Huh. Shira. Interesting. The comet. What? Didn't they say there was a comet going to destroy something? Or a comet going to collide with the Earth or something? And recedes. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Lucky Star? Okay. Hmm. I don't think that option really matters. Always watching over you. Aw, well, that's nice. Huh? Why are my friends here? Where are all the Incan people? Hmm. Okay, how did they get through the entire dungeon? I know I cleared all the enemies out, but if you decide to leave a dungeon, like leave and go to the world map, go back to town to heal or something like that, you, all of the enemies will respawn. You won't be able to get any more boosts from them, but you will, like, say you killed all but one enemy in a specific area, and you didn't get the boost because you didn't kill them all. You'll have to kill all of them all over again in order to get that stat boost. Okay. It's invisible. But Lily was in one spot. She... Her and Kara were waiting right outside the dungeon. I guess that's... Is that Eric? No, that's Lance. Lance was... Presumably back in South Cape. I don't know why he's here. Okay. Well, we're not really back. We're still in the ship. On the sea? I dropped down from where I was, which was a, you know, in a dungeon, and then now all of a sudden, uh, there's nobody over here, I couldn't remember, and then all of a sudden we're on a ship and apparently we're at sea now. That's news to me, I thought because, you know, you talk to this guy, yeah, all the Incan people that we were talking to earlier, they're all dead, and presumably have been the entire time, so I assume the whole sequence of the boat actually launching into the sea was also part of that hallucination that uh, Will was dealing with at the time. And there's Eric. Okay, you're pretty useless. Let's not talk to you. Alright, here is another one. Seth. Ah, we get the red jewel. You must do this now, before talking to anyone else, other than the people I've already talked to. Otherwise, you can never get it again. Now, this is also, once you drop on the ship anyway, it's the point of no return. You cannot do anything, or you cannot ever go back once you've dropped on the ship. All of the uh, places we've been to before are gone. So, make sure you've gotten all the red jewels you need and all the other things you want to do before jumping on the ship. Anyway, in order to advance the plot, we need to go over here and talk to Kara. Oh. Well, do we know anything about that? And then, of course, you have to talk to the, uh, the Queen's mummy here. There's a gold ring on her finger. Okay. 
Oddly enough, even though it doesn't say it or doesn't appear to be important right now, well, it does say it's the most valuable of all, all of the artifacts, but it doesn't really say that it will be a plot point, and it will much later in the game after you've pretty much forgotten about it. Oh boy, she's being a spoiled princess again. You could be cursed. Please, somebody curse Kara, then I wouldn't have to carry her around with me all the time. Whoa, what's going on now? Apparently we're hitting an iceberg. To the Riverson. Okay. As dangerous as sharks. Well, sharks aren't all that dangerous unless you're actually in the water. I wouldn't expect a lot of sharks to be able to... Oops. Sorry, I went through that a little fast. And if you notice the color, that is Seth's voice there. Coming from the depth. So, yeah. Um, what was I saying? Um, you know, sharks not particularly all that dangerous unless, you know, a whale would be far more dangerous to a ship because they're much bigger and they'll be able to, you know, take it down a little easier if they so happen to be inclined to do that. Again, sharks probably not all that inclined to tip a boat over unless, you know, they can smell you bleeding over the side of the ship or something. What about Seth? Fish ran into the ship. Oh boy. It's not even trying. Makes me think of Breath of Fire, where you can become a giant fish for no reason. Mm. Well, there is a reason in that game, and it makes more sense in this game. So, what can you do? Well, I guess I shouldn't have been making fun of it. I just lost a friend. And he's gone, too. Like, he's not gonna pop up later in the game because that would be ridiculous. We'll all be dessert. Hmm. No, that is the way you spell, you know, like the, the food dessert as opposed to an actual desert. I want some dessert. Hmm. Or you'll fall overboard. What are you handing me? Apparently we all got thrown off and... Well, that just looked weird. Even though Kara was inside, we were outside, and we were thrown, oddly enough, we're the only two that survived, and we got stuck on a raft. Yay, no. Oops, sorry, I was trying to attack Kara. <laughs> You've lost everyone? Yeah, I'm fine. Like a lizard's tail. I understand that they're trying to reference um, certain lizards' abilities to regrow their tail if they choose to shed it for, you know, say an animal is, you know, locked onto it or something like that. They can, you know, shed their tail and grow a new one. But that's just, I don't know. It's worded poorly, put it that way. You've read about being adrift. <laughs> that makes even less sense as the sequence goes on. Hmm. Well, yeah, usually. Let's enjoy... You don't enjoy drifting. You know you're pretty much screwed at this point, and you have to hit land within the first couple of days. Otherwise, you're going to... Well, you can survive longer, but unless you have some form of supplies, you're pretty well screwed. I'll have the meat I brought from the castle. You didn't bring it. It's in my bag. What is wrong with you, Kara? Spoiled little princess. Anyway, here we have the uh, the leg of yak and bit it off. Apparently, Will likes to comment on the food that he's eating. Hmm. He actually does this again later on in the game. Go figure. Yeah, I already uh, did that. And yeah, if you notice up in the top uh, left corner there, you can see my HP is dropped because it was refilled after the boss fight. Aw, I can't hit the fish? Come on, I want to hit the fish. I want to kill it. Kill it. Aw. You'll never get... Uh, I think you'll get tired of it. It's only been two days. Or, well, a day and a bit. Now, unfortunately, we're pretty much just kind of waiting around now. Whee! Kill the fish. 
Oh. Come on. Hurry up, sequence. I hit fast forward because I'm tired of waiting. Come on. Load the next sequence. There we go. Time passed slowly. Monotony? Well, having Kara there and having to listen to her, that would be very monotonous. Very much the same whining complaining all day. Arch of Time. Now if you notice again, my HP has dropped some more. Now, three days without food or water, because, you know, it's a sea, so seas contain salt, which means you cannot drink it, it'll just dehydrate you worse. They really should be, you know, barely able to move at this point. And I want to attack her again. Help is coming? Okay, why are you over here, Kara? Something is drifting here. And I'm going to use fast forward because it takes too long. And there's a letter. The contents read... Huh, well that's horrible. Oh, well I guess there's the next plot point of the game, but how the hell are we going to get there? We're stuck on a raft with nowhere to go. Okay, really? We both need to be saved. We're both pretty much screwed at this point. Yeah. She knows and has read a book on how to survive after being sent adrift, yet she will not eat the fish. Though it does make a lot of sense, there's no way you could cook the fish, considering they have no supplies. Raw fish, not particularly good for you unless prepared properly. And I'm assuming neither of them have that knowledge. <laughs> the fish is fighting? The fish are fighting? Depending on if you're referring to one or fish as a, you know, a group noun. And there's my English background popping into the forefront again. Oops! The fish feels. The fish feels like... It needs to eat. I feel like I need to eat. In order for me to stay alive, I need to eat the fish. That is my logic, and I'm sticking to it. Then again, I'm trying to apply logic to Illusion of Gaia. Crap. Anyway, you piss off Kara here, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Day 7, and we're still alive. A school of fish. Anyway, in order to do anything, we just need to hit the fish here and hit the button again to uh, eat it once it's on the side there. There we go. Yay, and we can do this to continually get our HP back until we eventually do that, though I think it's pretty much an endless swarm of fish. Anyway, after refilling our own HP, Aww, she's getting character development. Go figure. Yeah, so pretty much she got hungry and decided, oh, screw that, I'm going to eat food. Pretty much. Though I don't blame her, you know, whatever. Let's go catch a fish. Oh, I missed two of them there. You only need to give her one. Now, in order to feed her, you basically need to do the things that you always did before. Hit the fish, and then hit the button again, and this time she eats it instead of Will eating it. And here we go! Yes, she's going to stick around for the rest of the game. Yes, she's the love interest. And yes, the game matter-of-factly states it instead of letting it develop naturally. Bad writing. Anyway, here we are on day 12, and we would all be dead because we have no water. Anyway. Not much more of this. I should be able to finish this sequence off in this episode. Then we can get on with uh, advancing the plot a little bit. Obviously, the game does not end here. I'm not spoiling the fact that we're going to get off here. 
Why would you only think of those two? What about Eric? Why is it no one mourning for Seth? What is going on in this game? Anyway, here we're talking about the constellation of... Is that Cygnus or... I believe that's Cygnus. I don't know. Anyway, and a red star. No, not the one from Chrono Trigger. That would make this game interesting. You have a feeling it will come true. Well, let's see. Drifting for 12 days. Get me the hell off this raft! That's my wish! Get me out of here! Now! Well, no. That's not what you wish for. And they start to cuddle. Huh. Day 18. 18! Bull! <laughs> There's no way they would have survived that. Especially these two. Like, the princess wouldn't know how to do much of anything as it's been you know, indicated throughout the game, she's very, very spoiled and doesn't know a lot about how the world works. Will is a boy with psychic powers from a little tiny village. He may know how to do some of this stuff, but I don't think he'd be able to support them for three weeks. Doesn't act like a spoiled princess now. Um, just you wait, game. Just you wait. Considering the pink dress and the hairband, eh. They're in the water. Wow, this video might go a little longer. I expect it to be done by now, but oh well. I guess that's what happens when you normally run through the sequence on fast forward because it just takes too long. Anyway, we have dungeon music. Let's attack the sharks. No? I can't attack the sharks? They're not attacking. Let's think about this. Do we have thoughts? No? Alright, next sequence! Hurry up! Yeah, basically, we need to think. So, a little bit of fast forward. And, basically, we can't do anything until the game... There we go. They're not hungry. Then they, they would... The only time they circle, as far as I remember, you know, thinking back to old Discovery Channel days, is when they are hungry. They circle their prey. Uh, not exactly. You know, a mother, say a mother bear defending her cubs. Not hungry, defending. They do attack. Ah, well. Yeah. Okay, now apparently the sharks are leaving, because why not? Pretty much, anyway. 21. A full three weeks. You've come to hate the sunset, even though at the start of this trip she was enjoying it. Well, looking at the sea and the fish and the stars and all that junk. Okay, she just said that she hates it. Now she's calling it beautiful. Make up your mind, Kara. Aww. Developing love story that I don't care about. And all of a sudden, Will is the one that falls over. Go figure. And we get some dungeon music in a strange place, considering it should be more of a sad theme that he's, well, dead. Okay, he's not dead. But anyway, that's all the time I have for this episode of Let's Play Illusion of Gaia. Next time, we'll figure out how the hell we survived and what bullshit excuse they'll use to uh, indicate that, you know, we actually did survive instead of, you know, dying and then giving us a, an interesting plot point that would have been interesting in, say, Final Fantasy VIII. If anyone has ever heard of the Squall is Dead theory, you could apply it to this game, and it would actually make a reasonable amount of sense. In Final Fantasy VIII, it makes even more sense, but I'll let you look at that if you so, so desire. Anyway, that's all the time I have for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.